Hello and welcome to the video news of the Saigon Times. I'm Ding Yung with the program Jack with CEO. Today we will talk about tourism, one of the sectors being hit the hardest by the COVID-19 pandemic. Our guest today is Mr. Ken Atkinson, founder of Grand Thornton Vietnam and vice chairman of Vietnam Tourism Advisory Board. Thank you, Mr. Atkinson for accepting our invitation to the program. Um, yeah, so uh, Grant Thornton is one of the international accounting firms. Um, we offer the same services as KPMG and Pricewaterhouse, but uh, we're smaller and I think we have a closer relationship with, uh, with, most, of our, with most of our clients. We have uh, two offices in Vietnam, 270 employees, and uh, we're represented in over 140 countries worldwide. I have the first question for you. You know, tourism is a very important sector in the economy, but now you can see many destinations have turned quiet. Travel companies have to scale down their business, laying off their staff. Here and there across the country, some hotels have to close the door because of having no guests. The situation is so bad that some people say COVID-19 may wipe out the non-smoke industry. What do you comment on the situation? Yeah, well, today it looks very, very bleak, of course. and. Uh even bleaker because of the new, the new outbreak and the new um, um, mutations of the, of the virus, which uh, is um, taking the government and the authorities more time to, to get under, under control. But as bad as it looks today, I don't think it spells the end of the tourism and hospitality business. Uh, this is going to be a continuing growth industry once we have resolved the issues with the, with the pandemic. People, as their incomes grow, want to travel more. Uh, business people will start traveling again, but maybe not to the same extent as pre-COVID. Uh, I think there'll be uh, a significant drop in, in business travel, at least for the next few years. and. I think it's probably, people are saying 2025, 2024, 25, before the numbers of travelers return to the pre-COVID levels in, in 2019. Does Grant Thornton has any figure to illustrate the damage of the hospitality sector? Um, overall, the industry has been badly hit. Um, prior to 2019, the total revenues for the sector in Vietnam were approximately 35 billion US, US dollars. Uh, last year, that number had dropped to about 12 or 13 billion. So a, a significant, significant drop. As we know, most foreign visitors, uh, visitor arrivals stopped at the end of uh, end of March, and uh, the domestic travel um, was um, reduced quite significantly, uh, but it did pick up towards the the middle uh, before the July outbreak, and it picked up again towards the end of the year, and uh, there were about 50 million domestic travellers last year, down from 80 85 million. The problem is that many travel companies are running out the battery. I mean, having no money to run their business. What would you do if you were in their shoes? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, it's tough. I mean, I think in the short term, there may be opportunities to, uh, to reconfigure the business and look at doing something different with the expertise and the tools that you that you already have, um, so try and reimagine the business. Uh, but I think more importantly is to 
look at a strategy for post-COVID um, and also develop a, a strong business plan uh, to support that strategy post post COVID, and to um, yeah to hold on and, and maybe even you know close the business temporarily uh, until we can see the uh, the light at the end of the end of the tunnel. Several days ago, some travel company promoted a tour to the U.S. for vaccine, saying that those who try the travel program will get vaccinated. But some state management agency don't support the idea, saying that travelers should be careful to such the news. What do you think about the tour? Um, I think it showed the creativity of the Vietnamese <laughs> entrepreneurs. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's great to offer a, to a tour to uh, to get a vaccine, but when there's no guaranteed return, um, then I don't think it's a tour. It's a it's a one-way ticket, right? Um, so whilst Vietnam has been a little bit on the slow side uh, in the uh, if you like the race to get people vaccinated and commitments on on vaccine supply, um, we will get vaccinated in in Vietnam. That's for sure. It may take a bit a bit longer. Um, but um, yeah, to go overseas and to pay that kind of money and not know when you're going to be able to return to Vietnam, it could turn out to be a very expensive exercise if you get stuck in America for two to three months um, and have to pay accommodation or, yeah, or even health. You know, if you get taken sick in that time, uh, your health insurance um, could be a, a very costly exercise. A vaccine passport is what people are talking about these days. Some countries in Europe have reopened the tourism market ready to welcome traveler who have vaccine passport. Do you think Vietnam should do the same to support the market? Well, I think, I th I think a vaccine passport is probably going to be the reality post-COVID for, for nearly all countries. And I remember when I first started traveling to Asia back in the, the mid to late 70s, you know, we used to have to have a little yellow injection book that showed all the injections that we've had. I think unfortunately uh, today people have got a, um, there's a lot more uh, people trying to make money out of falsifying documents. So I think an on, online, you know, declaration, uh, digital passport is going to be necessary. Uh, there are two, the airlines seem to be split some are uh, talking about adopting the IATA passport. Others are talking about a common passport that uh, some of the airlines are, are supporting. Um, but if Vietnam develops its own passport, then we have to make sure that it's compatible um, with the other commonly used um, platforms. So it may, in the long run, it may be better to, to go with one of the ones that's been developed internationally. Let's talk a little bit about the long-term view. Some people say Vietnam tourism markets has many things to do to compete with other markets in the region, whether there is a COVID-19 pandemic or not. Those uh, visa, the, those uh, destination, the product and human resources. What do you think about the remark? Well, I think you're, you're very right to, uh, to raise those points. And uh, in fact, through the Vietnam Business Forum, where I'm also chairman of the Tourism Working Group and the Tourism Advisory Board, we've been lobbying the government for many years about visa facilitation um, and increasing the number of countries that are visa exempt or, or, or visa free. Uh, because we know that visa facilitation has an immediate impact on visitor arrivals and the common number used is 8 to 10% increase 
And we've seen that ourselves when Vietnam gave visa exemptions to the five European countries, the volume of travel from those countries increased significantly. Unfortunately, in Vietnam, there are five different government agencies that are involved with visas, um, and not all of them are in agreement about the, uh, the policy and want to continue being able to collect visa fees. Uh, but that is detrimental to travel, and particularly post-COVID. Um, we've already made a recommendation to the government that at least for a pilot project of, say, two years, uh, that they dramatically increase the number of countries that have visa exemption. In, in terms of um, HR, yes, uh, we have got limitations in, 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 in resources. And the way the, the industry was heading pre-COVID, we were going to be struggling with uh, resources within the industry. Uh, it, it's all to do with, with training because if people, particularly long haul travelers from Europe, from North America, they come to Asia and they have an expectation of service quality. And if we don't deliver that service quality, word spreads very, very quickly that, you know, Vietnam is not, it's not as good as Thailand, it's not as good as Indonesia, and, and people will listen to that, particularly now with, with all the digital channels that people are able to, to comment on. So training and, and also getting young people to understand that going into the, the tourism and hospitality sector, particularly hotels, is a great opportunity. It's one of the, it's one of the only industries that people can rise to the top very quickly with very few qualifications. Uh, Bill Marriott is the classic example. You know, he started as a bellboy and then became the CEO of Marriott International and obviously then became, became an owner. Um, so there are great opportunities, but I think one of my perceptions is that, particularly in Vietnam, uh, families look down on the service industry they don't see that as an opportunity for their children. They don't want them to be serving other people. Um, but in a lot of countries, everybody sees that as such a great opportunity. You get into uh, particularly a foreign managed hotel, you get great training, you get exposure to foreign tourists, you pick up languages. Um, and uh, it's also a pathway to, you know, to become a general manager. Um, so I think that's that's an education thing that needs to go at starting at school. Um, yeah, and the third one you mentioned, sorry. Destination and product. Yeah, so uh, destination and products is, again, it's something that we have talked about for many, many years. It's certainly getting much better, um, you know, with... Uh, with Vimpel Group and with Sun Group, uh, and some of the um, some of the destinations now have, have great facilities and, and great attractions, but it needs to be still needs to be broader, uh, and I think it would pay well to localities to specialise and, and have something different. We we don't want everywhere offering the same the same same same. Um, because then people people won't come back. Uh, if different different provinces, different regions offer something different, then there's a reason for people to come back. What should Vietnam do to overcome the weak points? It's it's investment. It's investment. it's strategy. Uh, it's ha having a vision for the for the future, but it needs also coordination. It, it does, we, different localities shouldn't be competing head-on all the time. They should be working together, developing a strategy, how they can all participate and all benefit together. As you know, marketing is crucial for tourism industry, but the budget for that is limited. 
by what way Vietnam can raise the fund for marketing? Well, again, uh, it's something we've been talking about for years. Uh, I did put forward uh, a suggestion several years ago that uh, Vietnam added one dollar per night for hotel stays in three, four, and five-star hotels as a tourism levy. Um, but um, that was, I think, that had some challenges and complications around tax. And um, so the spend by the government has been very, very low, less than uh, less than two uh, two million two million dollars a year. Um, so Tourism Advisory Board, TAB, have partnered with VNAT and uh, they have funded the, um, they have funded the redevelopment of, of the website, Vietnam, Vietnam Travel. Um, and we're just handing that back now to VNAT for them to take over and run and manage. Uh, we have financed the um, opening of a tourism promotion office in London. That's by some of the major stakeholders in, in, in the sector. Unfortunately, that office was launched in February and, and of course we had to uh, temporarily close it at the end of, end of March, but that will be revived. And there are also plans for a tourism promotion office in, in Australia um, later. Um, so that's kind of working in, in, in partnership. I think the government could find ways to raise additional money. Um, there's been a suggestion of taking it for, from visa fees, but that's counterproductive because we're arguing that there should be a reduction in uh, or an increase in visa exemption and therefore the tourism, visa fees will, will actually go down. So. Uh, that that's not uh, to me a good uh, a, a good working alternative, um, but imposing tourism tax or tourism levy, departure tax is something that many many countries have done. Uh, Singapore, when I first came to Asia again, Hong Kong and Singapore, uh, they had um, we used to have an additional levy at the hotels. Um, so it, it's something that when it's small. You know, foreign visitors don't react the same way as if they have to spend twenty-five, fifty dollars on a on a visa. Right now, the COVID-19 pandemic is raging across the country, but it someday it will end. According to you, what should travel company do to quickly recover when the pandemic is control? Yeah, I think, um, and I think unfortunately not all of them are going to survive. But uh, again, I think it comes back to reimagining the business. What are the customers going to want post-COVID? How will their demands, how will their habits change? And we're already seeing some of this. So, you know, hotels are, are now focusing on more digitalization so that guests can actually you know check into the hotel go to their room all all with uh, on 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 their mobile phone on 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 apps on facial recognition and they don't have to interact with anybody they can get into the hotel into their rooms without talking to anybody without interacting with anybody um, and also you know, what kind of service will, will people want in the future? So I think you've, there's got to be, again, a lot of, of research in understanding what the clients need and then developing the strategy and then implementing that. So I think investment in, in research and planning um, and then getting ready and uh, being ready early because it's going to be a very competitive landscape. We know that Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, Philippines, we're all fighting for the same tourist, tourist dollar uh, or foreign visitor dollar. Um, and we need to be prepared because for sure, Singapore is, is already 
you know, well advanced in, in their planning and their offerings, uh, and they're just waiting to, uh, to press the button. It's hard to project the recovery of the tourism industry right at the time the COVID-19 pandemic is developing complicatedly. But if you have to forecast, what would you say? Yeah, it, it, it is a complex. It, it's a complex question because it also it depends on on the speed and the rollout of vaccinations. Because, and I think rightly so, the government of Vietnam is is particularly focused on health and safety of of their people, um, and um, I think that that is a, a correct approach. So until or the experts or what the science is saying that until 75% of the population are vaccinated, you don't develop herd immunity. Uh, and therefore, we're going to have to have some kind of restrictions on, on people coming into the country. Uh, and there's also going to be risks to the health of, uh, of Vietnamese citizens. So um, I don't see that really happening um, till maybe end of first quarter or second quarter 2022. Um, that's from a, a Vietnam perspective. So from a global perspective, as I mentioned earlier, I, I think tourism will rebound quite quickly because people have been constrained and missing travel. And uh, so I think uh, particularly regional, regional travel will come back very, very quickly. Um, business travel, as I say, it will rebound very quickly, uh, but then I think it will drop, drop down um, and maybe to a level of 50% of, of what it was pre-COVID, at least for a couple of two or three years. Um, so, look, you know, the long-term perspective is 2024, 2025, before we're totally back to pre-COVID pre pre -COVID levels. Is there anything you want to share with us today? Um, yeah, well, as I say, I think it's uh, it, it, it's a sector that will continue to grow over the medium to, to long term. Uh, we've had a significant hit, uh, and it's been very challenging. Um, I think Vietnam. I'm, I'm I feel lucky that I've been in Vietnam. I think it's been one of the safest safest places to be. The government has to be congratulated on how it's contained the, the COVID outbreak and, and community spread. Challenges at the moment because of the new mutations, but overall they got 10 out of 10 in my, in my book. Um, and I think I speak for nearly every foreigner that's living in Vietnam at the moment, that uh, we feel very, very lucky. Um, so, yeah, so I think it's, as I say, it's, um, don't, don't despair because the industry will continue to grow. Middle classes will continue to grow and they're the people that are the future, the future, the future travelers. No one can say for sure when the health crisis will finish. All we can do is to comply with the safety measures and wait for the vaccine program. We have just entered the second social distancing period for two weeks. So stay, stay away from the ground, stay safe, and stay strong. So we stop here, and we'll come back with another topic soon. Thank you, Mr. Atkinson, for sharing your knowledge, your experience on the hospitality market. Let's hope the coronavirus will soon be controlled so that the market will come back as normal. Bye-bye and see you next videos.